because I have a disability with sex. I got confidence. And because of that, my life is like so much better. Welcome back to All Access Pass. I'm Spencer Williams, and up next, I will be talking about physical disabilities and sexuality. What time is All Access Pass again? 5 to 6 p.m. on Thursdays. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's perfect. Well, I can help out with boards, too. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. That would be awesome. Thanks so much for your help. Yeah, of course. I'm happy to do it. Good seeing you guys. You too. Yeah, you too. Spencer Williams is a 24-year-old radio show host living with cerebral palsy in Vancouver. He has been a client of Central Solutions for over a year. My name is Trish. Uh, Central Solutions is my little organization that I started. Just, you know, don't exclude yourself from living. We're here to help you kickstart that, so to speak. This is the main broadcast studio. And this is where all the magic happens. And you host a radio show? Yeah, a show called All Access Pass. And what we focus on is disability and disability issues. Right now, it's a monthly show. Since I am so passionate about the subject, sex and disability, I actually convinced my show to do a mini-series on the subject. Sex surrogates, also called intimacy coaches, are professionals who are hired to provide a sensual touch and erotic coaching for people with sexual dysfunction or physical challenges, with the goal of improving the quality of the client's future sexual life. Sensual Solutions is a Vancouver-based company that caters specifically to clients with disabilities, pairing clients with intimacy coaches who help them to overcome obstacles in their sex lives. Due to Canada's laws around paid sexual services, companies like Sensual Solutions operate in a legal gray space. In countries where sex work is criminalized, ethical debates have arisen about whether sex should be a right for everyone. What was the response to your sex episode? It's been really well received. I think it's been our most important uh, episode to date. That's so interesting. It's really hard to talk about the subject of sexuality in the world of disability. What gives you the confidence to be able to do that? Well, Sensual Solutions gave me an avenue to look at sex and disability in a different, in a different light. It's really great to work uh, at a radio station that has allowed me to open up about a topic that I am so passionate about. I think with sexuality and with any sensitive subject, it's just so helpful for people to hear the stories of people with similar experiences and similar bodies. It just makes you not feel so alone. Yeah, it's, it's important to uh, give people of all abilities access to something to make them feel comfortable. Yeah. I have to advocate for myself because if I don't, who else is going to do it? It's Trish calling. Thank you very much for applying with us. Can you give me a quick rundown of where you're at now, what you're doing for work, and um, why you applied? I started Sensual Solutions because I saw a need in Vancouver for people with disabilities who weren't getting the same kinds of services that other people were getting in relation to sexuality and sensuality. How were you able to discover that need? After I retired from my corporate life, I started answering phones at an escort agency. And what I noticed was that there were some clients who would call in. They would like to see someone. However, they did let me know that they had a disability. And I found it difficult to match the escorts that worked at this company with these clients. I thought, no, this is what I want to do. There has to be a service that helps people with disabilities. And I thought, what's the big deal? You know, help them get together, help them get into a position, help them if they need help with a condom, 
Like, why should they not have that right? So I opened the doors in the fall of 2011. Why do you think it is that there is such a lack of services for disabled people um, when it comes to sex? Is it just because we want to desexualize disabled people because we don't want to deal? The biggest misconception about people living with disabilities is that people with disability don't get horny. I really don't think people realize that there's thousands and thousands of people living with disability that have no sex life. And some clients just say, I just need to find out that I'm human and that I'm worthy. How do you describe exactly what you're offering? Is it a form of therapy? It's medically assisted uh, sexuality. We have a range of things. Cuddling, lots of touching, possibly some kissing, tantra, where someone might want to do a lot of massaging. So let's say someone's genitalia isn't functioning, we'll try and find something else. Remapping of the brain, trying to find new pleasure centers. Basically what we're talking about here is helping the client access their body for pleasure. Have you ever done a threesome? Yeah. Oh, you mean me or my client? And your client, like, oh, you ever shit. provided a threesome. <laughs> Thank you for the personal it's information. It's kind of how I got to being, be so open-minded. <laughs> you can tell you like music. I'm a fan of music in general. What's your favorite band, The Beatles? They're legends. Going way back to when you were young, did you feel pressure when people that you know that you that were your age and your friends started having their first sexual experiences, did you feel, okay, I need to do this now too? No, well, it was actually the opposite. Like, I'd be like 11 and watch movies like American Pie and think like, okay, I have to lose my virginity before high school is out. <laughs> American Pie seems like a dangerous place to get your sex ed. <laughs> Looking back, it probably wasn't the greatest. And then as I got older, I realized that, that no, I'm going to do the smart thing and just wait for, for the right person. Maybe try some dating. We'll see how that works out. But it wasn't getting anywhere. And I, I was getting kind of frustrated. And then a few more years passed. And I'm like, OK, now it really needs to happen. So I started researching, like, different agencies and everything I found was like really uh, shady and made me really nervous. And then I came across Trish and Central Solutions. I had like a couple of like really good close friends start to use the service too. Oh, cool. If my friend could do it, I could do it. What's there to lose? accept my virginity. Um, <laughs> Which I need to get rid of. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I told my dad about what I was wanting to do, and he thought it was pretty cool. So it was just awesome that he gets it. What did it mean for you to finally be able to have a sexual experience through Sensual Solutions? I was hella nervous, but I knew that I'd finally found an outlet to express and connect with another human being. It's good to see you. How are you like feeling? Like jello right now. That's what I like to hear. If you're a person with disability, there's a certain level of vulnerability that you have to be okay with. Absolutely. It takes courage to be vulnerable. Yeah, you, you can say that. Again. <laughs> My mom's uncomfortable with it, but she understands. She's like a lawyer who like deals with like human trafficking. Oh, you're kidding. She's on the opposite side of, like, sex work. Yeah. So really, though, she's uncomfortable with you doing this because she's equating what's going on with sex trafficking. Yeah. Which is not what this is, so. No, it's 
therapy, really. Yeah, it is. It's just therapy. My dad got really mad and was like, if he wants to do it, it's his choice to devalue something that he's really passionate about. Right. Well, because like I was saying, what's the alternative? There's nothing. There is nothing. At least your dad's supportive. Yeah. I'm a grown man. I can make my own decisions. Mm -hmm. And if it has serious repercussions, I can deal with Yeah. I can deal with those. Yeah. Or that once it comes, right? Yeah. It's interesting, I didn't know that she was a human trafficking lawyer. To me, what we're talking about in this situation is your rights, your human rights. Because my rights aren't being infringed upon. Right? Yeah. No one's rights are being infringed upon. I'm just super thankful for this because, like, it, it allows me to practice for... Your future wife? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I know she's out there somewhere, I just haven't found the right one yet. Yeah, never found her yet. It's like the only service where I feel, like... Comfortable. Comfortable with using... Sure, it may be expensive, but you can't put a price on this experience. I have a good time during these sessions, so it's it's worth to invest in the experience. Invest. I was gonna say the value. The is there? The, yeah, the value. Right. One hundred percent. Good work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good. Oh, it's so nice seeing you so relaxed like that. How do you feel about um, sexual assistance uh, in kind of a medical scenario, using your body, using your skin, having being nude or partially nude? Do you have any boundaries in, in that regard? Oh, that's amazing. What's your hiring process like? We have a basic application form, and then we do a phone screening, and then meet in person, criminal record check, and most of them have some kind of health background. That's what I'm looking for. We give them some training, and they'll learn about, let's say, basic um, pivot transfers from a chair to a bed. What motivates your coaches to want to work with disabled clients? And that is a question that's asked in the interview process. So for example, one coach has someone in their life that does have a disability. Another person is a human rights activist and feels that uh, this work needs to be done. Uh, another coach just said she was very open-minded and there's nothing wrong with using parts of your body to give pleasure to someone else or to help them access their body. That must mean they're really good people. I think we've hired some wonderful people. It's interesting how I found out about Sensual Solutions. I had a friend uh, send me an article about the agency and she said, I think you'd be really great for this job. And then about a year later, I saw an article in the newspaper and it was featuring Trish and her company again. And because I'm pursuing a career in sexual health, I contacted her and uh, we became friends because I believe in the cause of what she's doing. So I think it's important that everyone have their sexual needs met. It's a basic human right. It's not a privilege like riding a bicycle or ice skating. I'm currently studying for my clinical sexology degree. The goal is to get my doctorate in human sexuality. I'm basically doing the work now that I'm getting certified to say that I'm doing. So a lot of the clients that you meet, do they not even really understand what they want? You have to almost work with them to um, help them discover what they want sexually? Quite often, yes. Very often, like, we will have people who've never experienced being with a woman. They've never seen a woman naked, um, and it's very educational. And there are so many ways to be intimate. So this is where we get into a lot of the somatic sex work and body work. I've had clients orgasm by having their earlobes massaged. There are many different ways to achieve climax that doesn't necessarily involve penetration or intercourse. And what do you get out of it? Like, what's, how would you leave a session? What do you feel like? I love making people feel good. And I'm 
I'm good at doing that. I think it's very healing. Watching a transformation, someone going from uh, being scared and nervous and insecure to by the time I'm have done with my, my session with them, they're open and we're laughing and they're confident and they're free to ask anything and it's the the energy is just it's night and day it's so different when you tell people what you do how do they usually react i have encountered some people being condescending about it it's because they also have a lot of triggers around uh the sex industry and sex work in general and what they think that means they think about prostitution and sex trafficking, and that is not anything close to what it is that we're dealing with here. The stigma that exists around this type of thing, this puritanical idea that, that no sexual interaction should be exchanged for any type of money. Right, exactly. And it's funny because people say, oh, you're, you're, you're selling your body, which is completely untrue. What's happening is a service is being provided. You're choosing to participate in an activity that everyone does. Sex is just as important as air and water in terms of thriving and surviving as a species on the planet. So sex work, it serves society, it has a function, and it does help people. I really believe that the world needs more people like you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think what you do is so cool. At first, I was a little uneasy about paying for it, but just seeing how much of a connection I was getting, I'm like, okay, there are people that are there for you to just help you explore and find your true self. It, it's boosted my confidence by a, a thousand percent. Like, it's just changed every area of my life. Every time I have a session, it still feels like my first time. It still feels brand new. I still get those butterflies.